guys, this is Eliza. Welcome back to Eliza's Bookshelf. I want to do a book to screen adaptation review and today I want to go over Love and Gelato. So this has been out since 2016, I recently found out, but I've always been seeing it everywhere. I just never picked it up. I think there's a couple of like spin-off books too. Or maybe they're all a series, I don't know. But I finally read this one and I watched the movie and I have thoughts on both. Not good thoughts. It was bad. You have her main character named Lena. She is from the United States and her mother recently passed away from pancreatic cancer. But before she passed away, she did tell Lena that she wanted Lena to go to Italy for a few months to just explore, kind of live and find herself, make some new friends because when her mother was younger, she found that her time in Italy was like super life-changing. She loved it. And so she wants that for her daughter, Lena, as well. And Lena, she, you know, she doesn't really want to go. She has her friend in the United States. She doesn't really know anyone in Italy, but because this is her mother's wish, she goes to Italy. And in the book, she goes to Florence. Um, it's a little bit different in the movie, but she goes to Florence. She, when she gets there, she is being driven around a cemetery and she's like, what is this? Why am I, why, why is there grave sites here? But the person that she's living with is the caretaker of the area. So the, the person she is living with is named Howie. And so this person is super close to our mother, but she's kind of frustrated thinking, you know, if this person is such a good friend, how come I've never heard of you? How come I've never heard of you, Howie? But anyway, so she's introduced to other friends too, Sophia or Sophie. Um, through these people, she gets her mother's old diary. And in the beginning of the diary, she's reading it. There's the line that says, I made the wrong choice. So she reads it. She's trying to figure out what, what wrong choice is this, right? And the diary is probably, you know, 20, 20 pages long. A lot of things would have been solved if she just sat down and took an hour and read the whole diary. But anyways, so she's going on a run and she meets this guy named Lorenzo. Ren for short. I'll call him Ren. Anyway, so she meets this guy and then she gets sucked into their group of fans. She's meeting new people. She's making new friends. She's joining a love triangle, a love square. That part was super annoying. But as the book goes on, as the book goes on she reads her mother's journal and finds more about her life in Italy and is trying to figure out what does she mean by this wrong choice. Okay, so that's it for the introduction. Everything here will be kind of spoilery because I can't really say more and I can't really talk about the movie without spoiling it. So the wrong choice is possibly like, did she make the wrong choice in figuring out who she wanted to stay with? Because in the book, she, she had this relationship with a professor and so the main character Lena is trying to figure out oh you know who is my father really so she goes and trying to meet up with this long lost father that she never knew things like that I was super annoyed of this book I mean not not that bad but I did not like the love triangle relationship thing because one there's like cheating involved two she's she's leading a lot of people on a lot of people are leading others on and there's it's just a lot of lying involved that I did not like. So I did not like the romance aspect of this book. Number two, I feel like a lot of things could have been, you know, avoided if she just read through the whole book and figured out that this guy who is supposedly her father is actually a jerk and if she just stay put and figure out that Howie is the person who would be there for her. I don't know. I feel like they should have read on. But being the book, I think it's just for book's sake and for the storyline's sake. A lot of things happened that was really really frustrating so that is the book it was just okay I don't think I would continue with the series or her other books but unfortunately but yeah love and gelato I'm glad I finally gave it a try at least so I watched the movie and the movie was bad I was in the book chat so I could see a lot of people saying that the movie has nothing the same as the book it was like a completely different book so I already went into watching the movie knowing that I was not going to be seeing whatever I read on the screen. It's going to be completely different. They said it was a very, very, very loose adaptation. So I went into the movie with that mindset just to keep an open mind, um, putting that aside, putting aside all the differences. The movie was so bad. The casting was really bad. The actor the main character, the actress, I think the acting was so poor. Um, and the storyline itself, I think they 
they changed a lot of things around from the book, like the love triangle, the love square, whatever. It was still there, but it was like different people. There's no longer a Thomas. There is another guy who I don't even know what was so special about him for her to fall in love with him after a week. Um, I didn't, it was just kind of bad. So there are a couple of differences. So if you want to know about the differences between the book and the movie, just listen on. Number one, it was set in Rome and not Florence, like the book, which, you know, didn't really bother me. I know it bothered a lot of people. I do know that in the book, there were a lot of different um, places that I read about and that I was excited to see on screen. And so I didn't see a lot of that. That was kind of disappointing, but Rome itself is super beautiful. I thought it was pretty nice. Number two, the whole setting of the cemetery in the book was not present in here, maybe because of like production's sake, it wasn't going to be beautiful, but that was super different. Number three, she doesn't have like this relationship with Lorenzo first. She she meets this guy named, uh, I don't know, in the movie it's a super different guy. It's not even Thomas, so that was different. Number four, Lena was super awkward in the movie. I don't remember her being that awkward in the book, but in the movie she was super awkward. She picked fights with a lot of people. It was really rude. Her acting was really bad. Her crying scenes were very frequent and very awkward. It was just like a bunch of lip quivering. The one thing I remember from the movie is that she's not very stylish or popular. She doesn't really know how to dress herself. Apparently, I thought she dressed fine in there, but she said something about liking Crocs and the person was like, ew, and in, my, in my head, I was like, I love Crocs. I just got my kids their own Crocs and their own gibbets and stuff like that. So I thought that was funny. But yeah, overall, the book was not good. The movie was even worse. It was just all bad. Hopefully we'll have better book to screen adaptations soon. I'm really excited for a couple things that are gonna come out. I am of course waiting for any Blake Crouch books to movies. <laughs> I'm waiting for that of course. But yeah, thanks again for watching this review. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.